So like I mentioned, we want to add pagination to our blog's index page because after we have 100 blog posts, this is gonna be a really, really long page and it would be nice to have pagination so that you can see less at a time and make things easier to find. So we're gonna be using a gem called Pagey to pull this off. Pagey is an excellent uh, pagination gem for Rails and Ruby in general, and it is very fast and um, has all kinds of different backends that it can support. So we're gonna be using Pagey to add uh, links for pagination on the page. And I don't know if there's any screenshots, there are some. You can do different versions of this where you can have a bunch of links, you can have them uh, sort of shrink and get longer and stuff. You can also display how many items you're currently displaying and the total amount. You can also have like a version where you can have a combo box there to change the, the page really easily if you wanna to jump to a specific page. Um, so on. You have all these options and it can also work for calendars, which is a really nice touch as well. So let's get into installing Pagey. So first we want to probably go through and create uh, maybe a hundred blog posts. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up our editor, which I already have here. And we are going to go into the dbseeds.rb and we can go through here and say 100.times <clears throat> do, and we are going to create a blog. Uh, and actually, let's go take the index, the number um, in our 100.times, and we want to create a blog post with the title as uh, blog post I. So whatever number we're currently on, we'll go through that and print it out, and that should all work, and our body is going to be, you know, something basic we will create uh, that. And actually that probably should be content because we are now using um, the action text content. If you ever forget this stuff, open up your app models blog post and just read the code. So here we have has rich text and that is exactly what we want to use to confirm that. So if we run Rails DB seed now, we can have this run and what we should see in our database, if we open up the Rails console, blogpost.count, will count up how many blog posts we have in the database. Now we have 104. So we've created 100 additional blog posts um, over what was already in the database. And I'm gonna comment this out because um, we, don't, we may want to run this again and we don't wanna create another 100 blog posts. And we also want to confirm that our render, dashboard.render, uh, under settings, our build command, we want to make sure this no longer has the Rails DB seed because now that we have real production data in here, we don't want to seed the database again if we're going to leave these example blog posts in here. So if you were to leave this uncommented and deploy this to render without um, removing the DB seed command from the build steps, you'd end up with 100 fake blog posts in production, which you probably don't want. So we're gonna be careful about that. We don't need to really DB seed in production more than once. And so uh, this should be safe now that we remove that. So you can uh, choose however you would like to have this set up. Now, we have lots of blog posts. So if we restart our uh, Rails server here with bin dev, we wanna see that we have tons and tons of blog posts, um, and we do not, and that is because I forgot to set their published at. So let's go and open up a new terminal, and we're gonna run Rails console, <clears throat> and say blog post where published at is nil, um, so all of our new blog posts, and even any draft ones that we might have in the database, we're gonna update those to say published at is time.current. That's going to set it to the current time. So it updated 102 blog posts, which means we had the 100 new ones plus two old draft ones that will now be marked as published. And we don't have to go into the edit page for 100 posts. Now we see every single one is published. So it's probably wise for us to go in here and also add the published at time.current to this as well. And uh, that is good to go. So now that should correctly create the seeds and we have all of our giant list of blog posts that we want to go and paginate. So to add pagey, it's pretty straightforward. There's a couple little steps that we have to do. 
Um, we have to include the pagey modules for the back end, which is what handles the database queries. And then the front end is what handles the uh, HTML that it renders out. And then we need to query our database and wrap it with pagey, which is going to look at the URL and find the current page that the user is asking for. So let's take a look and see how that works. We're going to go back to our other terminal, stop our Rails server and run bundle add pagey. It's so gonna install the gem and it give us everything we need to start integrating it. So once that is done, we can go into our controllers, application controller, and we will include pagey backend here. And this is going to make pagey available to all of our controllers because it's going to be on the base application controller. And any blog post controller, any other controllers we write should all inherit from application controller. So we can use that uh, for pagination in here, which we'll do in a minute, but we want to also go into helpers, application helper, and we want to include pagey front end, like they mentioned in their instructions. And you can always reference pagey instructions for how to do this. Uh, for basic pagination, you can set up some configuration items. Uh, if you would like to override how many items per page or the nav bar links, uh, we're gonna leave that alone and use the defaults. So then the next step is to include pagey backend in your application controller, which we just did, pagey frontend in your application helper, we also did that, and now we need to wrap our collections with pagey in our actions. So that's what we're gonna do now. We will open up our blog post controller, and previously we were setting our blog posts like this, where we're checking if the user signed in and we display the sorted blog posts, otherwise if the user is not signed in, we only display the published blog posts and make sure that we sort those as well. So now we can update this by adding another thing in here where we are going to override the blog posts and we're gonna take those queries that we just had and say, let's pass those into pagey. So this is going to then take those database queries that we are previously using and then paginate them. And then the last thing that we need to do is go into our views and add the pagination links. And we only need this on the index page because that is where we are displaying that list. And we're gonna use the double equals here, which I haven't talked about before. This is basically saying the output of whatever code is in here, trust that as HTML safe. It's going to output HTML and we want to allow that to be embedded. Now, normally you don't want to do that and you only want the regular equals which is going to sanitize the output. So if you were to put in some malicious JavaScript in one of your blog posts, a single equals would make sure that that is sanitized properly. A double equals would cause it to actually inject the JavaScript on the page, which could do some malicious things like try to steal your credentials or something, which would be bad. So we don't wanna do that except in this case with pagey, because pagey in the example here is going to render out the HTML for these links, and we actually want their HTML, and we can trust that. So we're gonna say pagey nav at pagey. That's gonna take this at pagey variable from the pagination, and then use that to render out the navigation links. So now let's go back to our blog, refresh the page. We need to restart our Rails server after installing the gem, of course, and now we can refresh the page. And our page is not near as long because we have navigation links down here at the bottom. Now, of course, our blog probably needs to have some CSS to have a margin bottom. So let's go ahead and do that. And we will go to our layout, application, HTML, ERB, and where we have pros, MX auto, we could do an MY or MB margin bottom or margin top and bottom with MY. Um, and this might be like 16. So you can experiment with this and say, okay, that looks like a good enough uh, you know, margin on the bottom here. You probably wanna add a footer with some links or whatever. So I'll leave that up to you. But this is now rendering out navigation. If we click the next link, you will see that it adds a question mark, page equals two. The question mark says these are query parameters afterwards, and these are were like a, a name equals a value and they're separated by ampersand. So you could say hello world equals true in here. And this would 
tell your Rails parameters. Instead of submitting parameters through forms, you can also submit them through the URL. So they get parsed out pages number two. And then when we load our blog posts, you'll see down here that it also um, takes into account not only the published at timestamp if we're um, a guest user, it will now include a limit and an offset. So it's got our order, our where, and now includes this limit and offset. So it says limit the results to 20. That's 20 blog posts per page by default, the pagey sets. And our offset is 20, meaning that we're on page two. We want to skip the first 20 results and grab the next 20 results. So 20, basically it results 20 through 40 instead of, you know, one through 20 or 21 through 40 rather. Um, and so this is basically the second page. We're gonna skip the first page, grab the next page, and render those out. So that's awesome. Now we can jump between pages, and you'll see the results change as well. So here's blog post 59. If we go to the next page, it will have blog post 39, and it also persists any extra parameters in the URL when Pagey renders this out. So if you add hello world is true and you click the next page, it's going to include that stuff in the URL as well. So it keeps everything, just modifies the page variable so you can go back and forth to whatever page you would like. And that is all you have to do because Pagey looks at the parameters, it looks at everything else, it knows how to adjust your database query for you and so on. So it does basically everything for you and you're good to go, which is awesome. So this is uh, basically how we introduce Pagey but I did want to mention that if we were to log in, go to sign in with our email address and our password. So here we have our scheduled post here at the top. And if we go to the very bottom, we don't have any dra uh, draft blog post. But if we create a draft post without a published at, and we go back to the home page, our draft post is on the very last page. So when we previously set the sorting up in our database model for the blog post, app models blog post, we set the nulls to be last, which is fine, except we probably want those to be first. So what will now happen is when we come to the home page, our bl draft blog posts will be visible first, and then our scheduled posts and then the newest post that has been published going to the oldest. So this helps us go by ordering by newest first and the even newest newest will be the draft posts which uh, don't have a scheduled date yet. So that is probably the best way to organize this stuff or you might want to create a separate page for draft posts or scheduled posts and just remove them from here entirely and move them to other pages. So it's up to you on how to do that, but you can add another controller action, another route, and uh, set those all up accordingly with what you've learned building the blog post out so far. But integrating Pagey is super easy. Um, we do not have any CSS for this yet, but you can grab CSS for that. And we also may want to go into our index and add a little bit of a class to put a margin on the top. And I think we can say MT, 16 here, and if we refresh our page, um, let's see, we want that inside the parentheses. Refresh our page, and I don't know if that's going to actually add the class onto there. It looks like it does not, um, but we can put a div around this instead. So let's undo that, and we'll say div class MT16, or we could do, I guess, our margin bottom here as well and remove that from the home page. It's uh, kind of up to us to decide where we want our CSS to go. If we remove that from our application RB, we can put top and, barge, top and bottom margins on here, and that will adjust the bottom of the page so that this has plenty of room on both sides. So then uh, if you look and inspect this, there is a navigation with classes of page, paging nav, pagination, previous, disabled, active, page, and so on, page next, you can use these CSS classes to design uh, and display this however you would like. So it's entirely up to you on 
um, styling this, they're just going to output the HTML with some example classes that you can use for styling it and making it look pretty however you would like. Now, one thing that's cool is that our pagination links don't look great yet, but uh, Pagey also includes some examples for CSS. And if you scroll down here, you can look at the CSS framework integrations and Tailwind is what we are using. And there are some options for this as well. So here's one where they're each little buttons. Style two is a big sort of button block and we can grab the CSS, copy paste it, and go into our app assets application tailwind.css, paste this in here, and save the file and refresh our blog. And there you go, we have uh, buttons for each of those links, and it looks great and has just its own, you know, styling for our pagination. So we can jump between pages and it will do everything uh, by highlighting the current page and whatever else, disabling the previous page if, on, if you're on page one or disabling the next page if you're on the last page. Those buttons are disabled and grayed out. So uh, the Tailwind CSS uh, example is here for you and you were good to go with that, which is awesome. So now we just need to basically save this. So we'll stop our web server. Running git status will show all the files that have changed and then we can git add dash p and look at all of those changes. So here we added pagey to our gem file. We added pagey to the gem file lock after we bundle installed. Our application tailwind CSS now has the pagination CSS. Our application controller has the pagey backend. Our blog post controller now uses pagey for paginating our blog posts. And our front end is included in the application helper, so pagey can add that pagey nav to our views. We've adjusted our sorting to be nulls first, so that our draft posts are at the beginning, not at the end. And then we can see that we added the pagey nav to the index page for our blog posts. We added the example for DB seeds to create blog posts. Um, and we commented that out just in case we don't want to accidentally run this and create another 100 blog posts the second time. Um, you can also do a finder create by title where uh, we can adjust that. And maybe we should do that right now while we're talking about it. So here inside of our DB seeds, we can go and adjust this so that instead of the find uh, or the create, we can do a where title is blog post name, first or initialize, just like we did up above. We will assign that to a blog post variable. And then we will call blog post dot update and give it the content and the published at. And those might be exactly the same uh, as before if we were to run this again, but it will ensure that we only ever have a blog post with the idea of one, two, three, four, five, and we're not creating you know, duplicates of those. So now I feel good that our DB seeds can actually uh, leave this uncommented because we can run this a bunch of times and if we're running DB seed now, what will happen is if you edited the content or the published at of any of these example blog posts, they would be reset to hello world and published at, but it will never create more than what we defined there. So if we run Rails console and do blog post dot count, we should still see that it is 105. It is not 205 or 204 or whatever. Uh, the five is the five blog posts that we created manually when we were testing. Um, so we have the 100 plus that five. We don't have another 100 every time that we run DB seeds. So that's good. And that's something that I recommend using git add dash p so you can see sort of here's where we were. We didn't really finish that thought. Let's go finish it before we commit this code to git and so on. Um, and now we've gone through all of the changes, staged them up and we can commit and say add pagey for pagination of blog posts. We'll commit that, git push, and this will go up to production automatically on render. And I will be back in a second when that is done. And now that our application has been deployed again to render, we can update uh, or refresh our page on production. And we'll see that we now have pagination on here. We only have a single blog post, which the pagination is not really useful for yet. But 
after we create 20 blog posts, or 21st will now be on the next page. So uh, if you would like an extra bonus challenge for you would be to check the pagey code that we wrote when you were in your index and optionally render out this pagey nav. So you would pretty much need to look at this pagey variable and print that out and see what is uh, the total results. And if they're less than 20, uh, we could skip rendering out pagey. So the first page um, wouldn't need this until we have a second page. So you could basically hide this until there was a second page available. And uh, that would be my challenge for you. And you can read through the docs of pagey and um, inspect this. You could throw a binding.irb in here to actually poke around and see uh, how to do that. And I'll just show you real quick. You can use either a console, uh, which will actually embed the web console. So in development, we'll refresh our page. We gotta restart our server one more time because we keep shutting it down. Uh, as a little bonus tip, this will embed a console at the bottom of the page, just like on your error pages. And here you can inspect those in, in instance variables. And you could look at this and you could see, oh, uh, there are all the methods here. We can actually retrieve some of these things like count, page, uh, items. Count looks to be the total number of items in the database or something like that. Uh, which probably is because we're not logged in and that would not include the draft posts, even though we had 105 is total in our database. So um, you can read through this and figure out if our count is less than a page of results, let's hide this or only display it if our count is more than a single page of results. Uh, and you can see that that items, that well, counts the number of results is here. Uh, so I'll pause this here you can go and uh, do this on your own as a challenge. And in a, just a second, I will actually walk through it and show you how I would do it. So I'll give you a chance to pause and now we'll go solve it. So here's what I would do. I would look at the number of items here in pagey vars and I would try to retrieve that. And we would say pagey.vars items to retrieve first the vars hash, and then we should be able to access items inside of that hash, which is 20. And then we also have uh, count over here. Oh, actually we have items over there. So we could just say at pagey.items, and that'll give us access to that. And so we can say at pagey.count is greater than at pagey.items. And if that's true, where we have more results for the whole collection than the number of items on a single page, then we would run, want to render out our navigation here. So let's go and do that. We'll go and say, if, actually we don't want this uh, margin there otherwise. So here we'll say at pagey, and we'll do the same thing here, count, it's greater than at pagey.items, and we'll only render out this navigation if so. And so we'll do that. And then we'll want to go into our database. And we could say, <clears throat> um, maybe blog post dot last uh, 90 items destroy all. So, or delete all. No. Um, what is, oh, that's gonna give us an array, that's why. So if we grab the last 90 items, <clears throat> that will give us an array. So we could do that. We could say the last map and destroy. And what this will do is pull out those 90 items, give us an array. And the reason I know it's an array here is it says array. Um, normally, if we got an active record relation back, we could just say, hey, delete all these items. Uh, but because we have an array of loaded records and not a SQL query, we can't call destroy or delete all on those. So instead, we can call destroy on each one of those items from RubyLand. And we'll be a little slower, but that's fine. We don't have that many blog posts. And if we delete 90 of those blog posts, we should only have 10 left. And then we can check and see um, what's going on. So this is another little thing that pagey will actually throw an error 
if you uh, specify a page that is not valid. So we used to have six pages worth of results and now we don't anymore. And so it's important to basically like, we can either ignore this error and just reset our page or we could catch that exception and change it. Um, for now, let's go and just make sure what we did works. And we don't have navigation at the bottom with pagey, but if we were to run Rails DB seed to recreate those hundred blog posts, and we refresh, pagey is now there again. So our code works great, but it did point out something of sort of a feature of pagey. If we say page equals 1000, we don't have a thousand pages. Page must be between the numbers one and six. So we can also uh, handle that in our controller and basically change the param to uh, a valid number. Like our first page, we'd probably want to reset it to the first number one and uh, just reset it so the users, if they happen to navigate to some crazy page, wouldn't get an error or a 500 message. So the way that we can solve this is we can rescue from this error and we can do that right here. We'll say rescue, pagey overflow error. And well, what do we do here? How do we make this uh, work fluidly? Well, we could redirect them maybe to page one. That's an option. Um, and that would be an easy, very easy option. We could redirect to blog posts path or the root path and say page is one. And that is probably the best option here because if we now refresh our page, it will take us from page 1000 to page one and actually update the URL to be correct. Now, another interesting thing that's just a Ruby thing I wanna show off here is we have an alternative option where we can update params page and reset it to number one, so page number one, and then we can call this method in Ruby called retry. So whenever your code throws an error like this one, you can actually, in a block or a method, uh, call retry and it will go and modify the page variable in our example, and then basically restart this method. So it will just jump from here back up to here and execute this again and this. And then in that case, it should have page number one instead. And that's just an excellent little Ruby trick that you can do. So I wanted to show that because now page 1000, page 1000 works, uh, 1001 works, any number that's invalid will work and it will take you uh, to page one and it will render out page one. Now, it doesn't really matter which option you go with. Uh, this one will always return a valid uh, response. Then the other redirect will actually take you exactly to the correct page that uh, you might want. Now the solution you use here is uh, kind of up to you. I believe probably the more uh, correct version would be to redirect to page number one. And that may be important for SEO. So if you're um, if Google links to a page that's no longer valid, it would at least be taken to a valid page and it would know, you know, that page no longer exists or whatever. Um, it's kind of up to you on how to address that exactly how you would like. Um, but I did want to point out this option because I really love that part of Ruby here with the params page being updated and then just calling retry and the method just gets rerun. It's like one of those super elegant features of the Ruby language, which I love. So I just wanted to show you that even though we're probably not going to use it because the redirect is maybe the easiest option here. Um, but also that makes another request to the server. So, you know, it's kind of your mileage may vary up, vary, and you might want to use the other option, but I thought I'd show you both so you can make a decision yourself. And um, that should be that. So if we add this onto our page, uh, that is my solution. Those two changes, we'll do the if statement, and then we discovered by deleting those blog posts that we have another, you know, little minor bug to fix in general, people probably won't be linking to pages that are invalid, but in case you change something and somebody's linked to that page that used to exist, now we can safely handle that. And that's one of the core features of building a web application. You want to catch those things when they go wrong and give the user at least a direction of somewhere to go. If not rendering a page that's actually useful saying, eh, this isn't, 
a valid thing, but at least we can help you continue on your path rather than just giving you an error. So that's always a better option to give them something of use, a uh, useful thing instead of, you know, just giving them an error. So let's say hide pagination when there is only one page. And we'll push that code up as well. Um, you can always reference the stuff on our GitHub repository if you want to see the latest code, github.com, go rails, screencast, slash, uh, what was the project? Learning Path Blog. There we go. And there's our commits. So if you ever need to reference the latest code for this, take a look here and you will have access to all of that. Uh, and then our blog, once that has been deployed to production, it may take a few minutes. It is probably still deploying. Yep, we'll give it a second and then we can refresh this page and that pagination should disappear. So now that our new deployment is live where we can hide pagination, we can refresh our page on render. Drum roll, please. And there we go. We have the hidden pagination. And once we deploy or publish at least uh, 21 blog posts, the pagination will show up and be uh, invisible until then. And of course, if you ever want to follow along, our GitHub repository is the place to go for the latest code and just to compare with your code. If you made a mistake uh, and you wanna see what the final code was like, take a look at our GitHub page and you can compare and see, oh, I missed this thing or whatever it might be. It can be really helpful for that. So until the next lesson, I will talk to you guys later. Peace.